In his first interview since his arrest in December of 2008, Bernard Madoff tells the New York Times that the banks and hedge funds he dealt with at the time of his fraud were in some ways, quote, complicit in his Ponzi scheme. He makes light of their, quote, willful blindness, adding, again, quoting, they had to know. Joining me now to discuss what Madoff's allegations could mean for those institutions and the victims of his scheme is Jacob Frankel, a partner at Shulman Rogers. He's a former federal prosecutor and former SEC attorney, and he joins us from Washington. Jacob, welcome back to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. Always good to have you on. Good to see you, Mark. Thank you. Jacob, I posed this during the commercial break, but I guess it's, it's well enough to pose again. What's wrong with Bernard Madoff? I think only a doctor can answer that question, but in terms of this interview, what we're, there's only one thing I think that's really believable in the interview, and is what Bernard Madoff said, which is that he is not credible. It was a very self-serving interview, and I think you know it really did nothing to advance claims for anybody except somebody who was very accustomed to being in the limelight, an opportunity to get some attention. In that New York Times article, Madoff is quoted as saying of the banks, they had to know and he continued but the attitude was sort of if you're doing something wrong we don't want to know and all, well, well, the short answer is, the, the, the tr first of all, the trustee has brought civil lawsuits against a good number of the financial institutions, large investors, to claw back funds. So from an evidentiary standpoint, we are going to find out. But when he makes, when Bernard Madoff or anybody else makes that allegation, when you start talking about this concept of willful blindness, there are three terms in the law that are used interchangeably. One is willful blindness. The second is deliberate ignorance, and the third is conscious avoidance. They all mean basically the same thing, which is when somebody has an affirmative duty to act, to inquire, they, they, they shun, they shirk that duty, and, and basically move, move forward and ignore their responsibilities. Right. That, even in the law, is a substitute for criminal intent. We're not looking here at cases where there are criminal indictments, and in fact, he acknowledges in the interview that the trial trustee likely has given this information to criminal prosecutors. The only value that Bernard Madoff likely has brought in this entire process from a semi-credible perspective is providing leads to the trustee as to where assets may be. Right. Anything else is fundamentally not believable. Well, it's interesting because I, I got a message from one of my producers, Vanessa Juarez, and she says, she points out correctly, that Madoff could have gotten this type of attention at any time since his arrest. Is there any anything else for him to gain by making these allegations. Well, I mean, in terms of, is there anything to gain by making the allegations? I mean, that, that's it's not really like hard, they're going to shake hard to time tell off because we're sentence, not, right? <laughs> it's it's not going to affect his sentence. He's not going to be called. He, he's not going to be called as a witness. We don't know what he was thinking. We don't know what the timing is in terms of, in terms of the book, such that it gave rise to a reason at this point to provide, you know, to provide this this information. The fact is, this is what Bernard Madoff says, and for 20 years or 15 years years. This is somebody you know, who lied to his investors, who misled uh, institutions, who actively took active steps to conceal a fraud. And now he's saying that, oh, well, they really should have known better. And I just don't think that's something that really uh, resonates well or is likely to make any difference. It certainly will have no influence on the decision of the institutions mm. in their defenses of the claim or even influence uh, Mr. Picard card or the government in terms of the advance of the civil litigation or the criminal cases. If you were one of the victims of this massive fraud and you're hearing this information and reading this during the Times, what are you thinking today? Yeah, there's nothing about what he said that will that will or or should in any way change the level of anger and disgust they all have and direct at Bernard Madoff. What's really at issue here is, is there information, credible information, that he has given to Mr. Picard or to the government, or really Mr. Picard, to help with the trustees' cases? And the only way we're going to know that is when these lawsuits actually progress, get into discovery, but the vehement denials that we are hearing from these institutions certainly suggest that this is hot air coming from Bernard Madoff. And Mr. Madoff uh, also continuing to insist that his family had no knowledge of this and wasn't involved. 
not both his family as well as his close friends. It's mm. interesting. He says, "Well, the institutions, you know, should have known better, you know, or maybe were complicit." On the other hand, people to you know, who are his friends, his family, are complicit. Even people who've been indicted, you know, they're wrongfully accused. It, I think that just highlights the complete lack of credibility that attaches to Bernard Madoff's statements. At the end of the day, though, what really is going to matter is who was prosecuted criminally, for what. Uh, were they convicted if they've gone to trial in the trustee actions? Are, you know, was there recovery? Um, it would be very interesting to see if any of them actually go through litigation yeah. and actually end up with a verdict as opposed to a settlement. And the short answer to all of that is we're now in February of 2011, and I have a feeling we may be having this conversation again the latter half of 2012. And Jacob, you know, you and I have talked about this quite a bit since this uh, first happened. We talked a lot last year about this and I hate to play the role of the obvious pessimist but is something like this going to happen again will anybody be dissuaded by this by his jail sentence by the lives that he destroyed Mark that's an excellent question because the fundamental objective in criminal prosecutions particularly of profile is in addition to punishment for the wrongdoing is to send a deterrent message and in some ways you're all it's almost an interesting segue into the Raja Ratnam trial which again we're not talking about a Ponzi scheme now we're talking about insider trading but there seems to be and, and I and I think I've mentioned this before what I call a generational evolution of this type of activity and what happens is after a boom market after a number of years where the activities of the prior generation the wrongs of the prior generation tend to be forgotten all of a sudden is we see some of these the insider trading in particular but we see some of these uh, circumstances some of these uh, frauds recur the fact of Bernard Madoff going to jail for his life the fact that people took their own lives because of what he did the fact that close associates have gone to jail for people People who are bent on criminal activity, it is likely to have a, a very limited, if any, r meaningful effect. The real test is going to be, will the institutions that have learned from the Bernard Madoff lesson really stick to their guns in terms of enhanced compliance? Are, you know, are, are, are some of the smaller institutions, individuals who are functioning as investment advisors, right. broker dealers, are they saying, you know what, that only applies to Bernard Madoff, it does not apply to me? Or are they saying, you know what, we really should stand up and take note? Right. Have we brought in compliance and legal experts to make sure that we have the right systems in place? Place to ensure that not only are we are doing our jobs so that we don't get accused, but so that our investors are protected. Okay. Because ultimately it's about the integrity of the system. All right, Jacob Frankel, partner at Shulman Rogers, joining us from Washington. Always good to talk to you, Jacob. Thanks. Thank you, Mark.